Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be a video about goal setting and I know that New Year's has obviously come and gone but we're still in January and I want to know how you guys are doing with your goal setting, with your whether they're new year's resolutions or monthly goals or weekly goals i want to know how you're doing with them and i really 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 want all of you guys to crush your goals and to do what you want to do and achieve what you set out to do this year in 2019. So I wanted to make this video to kind of motivate you guys if you are lacking in motivation, maybe you made New Year's resolutions or you made monthly goals for January and you've already, you feel like you failed. You haven't failed, it's never too late to start, it's never too late to pick yourself back up. So I wanted to make this video to motivate you guys and to give you five of my best tips for how to get what you want in 2019 and smash those goals. Tip number one is to write them down. I feel like that's such a no brainer, but it's true. Writing your goals down will help you to kind of visualize them more and help you to get what's in your head out on paper so that you can actually look at it and take it in and think about it more. It just clears your head and puts your thoughts down on paper. And there's something about that that just makes it more of a reality. That is your first step is to write everything down. I do this all the time. I feel like to really get clear headed about what I want and about my goals, I need to put it on paper. Whether for you that means, you know, typing it out on a Word document, maybe on your laptop, writing it out physically on a piece of paper, which that's something that I really like to do. You don't have to have a planner to do this. You don't have to spend money to do this. It could be on a random piece of paper that you find or like a post-it note. Just write it down, see the words looking back up at you and that will help you to visualize your goal and it will honestly help you to get things done. Another thing about writing them down, which I find really interesting is, especially if you put it in a planner or if you put it somewhere where you can kind of go back to that, it's really interesting to look back on in years to come or like maybe in the following year and see what your goals were and see where your head was at at that time. I keep all of this kind of information back to, I think probably like 2008, 2009. And it's so interesting to see how my goals and plans have changed and what I've actually achieved in those years. Number two, which goes hand in hand with writing down your goals is to visualize what you want. This sounds so cliche. It sounds so simple in a way, but it really, really works. And I'll give you a really small stupid example <laughs> okay so back in 2009 and i only know this because i found a piece of paper where i had written down all of my goals or like aspirations or what i wanted um back then and back then i mean it was 2009 i was what 22 21 I can't even remember, I think I was 22. So I was really young and obviously my goals and plans have changed. Um, a lot of the things that I had written down were material things, you know, like own a Chanel 255 handbag. <laughs> it was so interesting when I found that piece of paper like years later to look back on it. One of the goals that I had written down was to own or to drive. And at the time I couldn't even drive it and you ha I even have a license, was to own a Volkswagen Beetle, a black, Volkswagen Beetle. I was very specific about what car I wanted, even though I couldn't drive at the time. And I think I found the piece of paper maybe when I was like 27 or 26, around that age. And I had since then passed my driving test, got my driving license, and I had actually purchased my very own Volkswagen Black Beetle. It was a used black beetle but it was still what I wanted and it was still what I loved and this sounds like a very stupid like materialistic goal but I'm just giving it as an example back in the day when I made that goal I remember visualizing myself driving around in my little black beetle I just really wanted one I don't know what it is about those cars I still love them but clearly now as a mum of four, it's not a practical car for me. So I did sell that car. Back in 2009, when I made that goal, all I ever did was just visualize myself. Whenever I visualized myself driving, it was in that car. And I swear that that kind of thing really, really works. Same, you could apply it to anything. If your goal is to finish university or graduate from university, 
keep visualizing yourself throwing that cap in the air at your graduation, celebrating with your family. Like those kinds of things are really what push you forward and motivate you. And even if it's something as silly or as simple as having a black beetle, visualize yourself in that situation, visualize yourself achieving that goal or having that thing that you really, really want. And it will propel you forward and it will really motivate you. And somehow, with positive thinking and a positive mindset, you will reach that goal. I am confident of it. Tip number three is to change your attitude. So that kind of has led us on from the last point. Changing your attitude from a negative one to a positive one is gonna help you reach your goals. Again, sounds very cliche, but it absolutely works. I find that having a positive attitude towards just everything in general can help you move forward rather than backwards. I know so many people who are affected by this every day. I know so many people that are really negative. You guys probably know the same kinds of people. Every time you talk to them, they tell you something bad that happened or you t they tell you about all of their problems or all the things that are going wrong. And I know it's easy to do that, especially with like close friends and stuff, but sometimes it's just really nice to have uplifting conversations and to dwell on the positive and have gratitude for what you already have and that while there's nothing wrong with venting to your best friend or venting to somebody that you're close to that's not what I'm talking about I'm talking about when it consumes you completely and I just know so many people that have that problem where they just tend to dwell on the negative 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 and then all of a sudden things just seem to always go wrong for them. It's not that things are going wrong for them, it's that they're choosing to see it that way. And that's something that I spoke about recently on Insta Stories where I was saying that everybody has the same amount of opportunities in life. Everybody has the same amount of luck or misfortune in life. It's just how you react to certain things that happen to you in your life, how you choose to react to what goes right or wrong in your life however we want to look at it and of course some people have really unfortunate things happen to them i know that i 100 percent know that i get that and i've i myself have had some really unfortunate things happen to me in my life but i just choose not to let it get to me and not to let it affect me and i choose to go with the positive and to dwell on that rather than the negative because otherwise the negative consumes you and it will just eat you up alive. Number four is more of a practical tip and that is to make small changes and take small steps every single day towards your goal. So say your goal is to increase your fitness. The worst thing that you could possibly do <laughs> start January is to go on an hour long run every single day or five times a week where before that you were doing absolutely nothing. That is the worst thing you could possibly do. And we all know this, like in the backs of our heads, in the backs of our minds, we all know this. The best thing you could do is go for a five minute walk every day, or maybe do a half hour or 20 minute workout three times a week. You can't take massive steps and expect to get there faster, that's not how it works. Taking smaller steps will actually help you to get there quicker than taking bigger steps because you will build those habits gradually and then once you get there, it will be the kind of thing that actually you stick with rather than something that you just do for like two weeks and then it's over. Make choices every single day that are going to benefit you tomorrow and that you are going to be proud of tomorrow and that will get you closer to your goal tomorrow. So just take each day at a time don't stress too much about taking massive leaps, especially when you've just started. That is never gonna help. Honestly, the best thing you can do is to chip away slowly at something over a longer course or a longer period of time. That is what will get you to reach your goal in a really sustainable, like concrete way. When I had my last baby, Andrea, I was really keen to get back into my fitness, but I knew that it would take time and I also, was um, suffering with diastasis recti, I had tummy separation, and I had my pelvis problem as well, where my pelvis was like bent out of shape, so I couldn't do a lot of things. So I took it really, really slowly, and while that can seem frustrating in the beginning, because you're looking at the long-term goal, and you're all the way back here, and you're thinking, that just seems so far away, I should be doing so much more to try and get there faster. That's just not how it works. So what I would do is in the first six weeks, I would go out for like 20 to 30 minute walks. That was it. 
then I increased that slowly I did like a very very safe light postpartum workout which was like 21 minutes then when I felt a little bit more ready I increased that to another workout that was slightly harder slightly more strenuous again built up my fitness built up my core, built up my strength, and just did it slowly and gradually. And now I'm at the point where I'm doing my normal HIIT workouts, intense, like high intensity interval training workouts, and I'm doing them five times a week, and I'm back to what I was before having my last two babies, and I feel strong and fit. But had I gone all in, I probably would have really injured myself, number one. My core probably would have been completely shot. My tummy muscles would have been everywhere because if you don't exercise them properly and slowly in the right way, it's just a mess. So I really feel like that's that's just one example. Obviously, that's just fitness, but you can apply that to anything. Starting slow and slowly building up to your goal is so much more sustainable and it's so much better and it will get you results in the long run. And that's what you want. You don't want results for like two weeks and then that's it. You want results forever. Tip number five, and this kind of goes along with the shifting your mindset idea, but it is to see your failures as teaching opportunities or opportunities for you to learn. So instead of seeing your failures as a negative thing, see them as a positive thing and just take them as like learning opportunities and learn from them. You can learn so much from a failure, which I don't even see as a failure anymore. I mean, I used to beat myself up about things. I used to beat myself up about, I wish I would have done this differently, or I wish I would have gone to university and actually finished. But then had I done all of those things perfectly, I, it wouldn't have led me to where I am today. So all of those failures that you experience in life are actually getting you closer to your goal provided you use them in a positive way. If you use them in a negative way, you just use them to beat yourself up about stuff, feel rubbish about yourself, think that you are a failure and let it consume you, then obviously that's exactly what it's gonna do. But if you choose to see it in a positive way and to see it in a way that, okay, so that didn't work for me, I'm going to improve upon myself in this way or next time I'm gonna do this differently, use them as teaching tools and teaching opportunities every single time. And what I think is really interesting, and another YouTuber that I watch actually spoke about this recently, Tracy Hensel, she always says, it's not about what you do on occasion that counts, it's about what you do most days. So don't worry if you slip up, don't worry if you fail some days, don't worry if you make mistakes. So long as you're not doing that every single day, it's fine, it's cool. Like, just make sure that what you're doing most days is those small little steps that are getting you towards your goal. And then it won't matter if sometimes you slip up or sometimes you mess something up. Provided you're doing, you're putting in the groundwork and you're putting in the effort most of the time, it really doesn't matter if you fail sometimes. And it doesn't mean that you're back to square one because the next day you get up, you restart your day, it's a fresh, clean slate. Every single day is a new opportunity. Every single day you have choices in life you can either get out of bed on the wrong side and see the negative in everything and decide that today is going to be a bad day or you can do the opposite to that i recently did a video i think it was last week where i showed you guys a what i ate wednesday and i wasn't going to film it because it was the day after we moved so many things went wrong so many things behind the scenes that like we didn't even show you guys but a lot of things went wrong but i love that video because in it i'm just rolling with the punches like I just kept going and I'm really proud to look back on that and to see that and to see that it, I didn't let it affect me and it wasn't just me it was me and also Jonathan my husband like we just chose not to let that get the better of us and we chose to just see the positives in it when everything hits the fan if you can laugh at that and if you can somehow see the positive in that, I promise you it will help you so much in life, not just to reach your goals, but just to have a happier and more fulfilled life. So I hope that these tips help you guys. I really, really do. I really want you to all crush your goals in 2019. I really want you all to be happy and healthy. 
You can hear Bianca, she's going for her walk. <laughs> So she's screaming outside. Don't forget to check out my blog for pictures. I will have outfit details and all of that up on there. And um, give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Bye, Bianca. <laughs> and I will talk to you guys in my next one.